Hey guys, it's Zach here, and today we're watching another new release from Arrow Video, Shock, the 1977 film directed by Mario Bava, starring Daria Nicolodi and John Steiner. Now, I must admit, Italian cinema is one of my weaker subjects, so I'll be coming at this film as someone who hasn't watched nearly enough of it, giallo and horror especially. Arrow has a nice package and list of supplements for us to check out, but before that, let's talk a bit about the film's story itself. Dora and her son Marco are moving back into their old family home, years after Dora's late husband committed suicide there. The family begins anew with the introduction of Bruno, Dora's new husband, who's kind, caring, and a great father figure for Marco. Despite Dora's reservations and anxieties about moving into the house with a history, they go forward with it anyway, doing their best as a family to stay positive. Regardless, it doesn't take long for Dora's mental state to begin wearing down. From noises in the night to clattering objects, Dora is convinced the place is haunted and that perhaps something or someone is there to antagonize her. Of course, Bruno is the always positive support, believing it's just nerves and mind tricks. Marco, on the other hand, begins to act strangely over time, becoming increasingly disturbed over the course of the film, acting out and eventually becoming violent. That's about where I'll stop on the details, but if you've seen a ton of horror movies, then this won't be anything new. Dora's plight is a fairly standard setup, and if you're a fan of paranormal possession films, then shock will feel all too familiar. Not to say that's a bad thing, especially since this 77 film came out before many of the others, so perhaps it's more striking for its time. Regardless, Shock was an entertaining enough horror film. There are some great scenes, and the third act makes up a bit for the places it drags. However, my biggest criticism with Shock is the acting. The adults are pretty normal for a giallo film in their highly exaggerated style, but the child, Marco, just takes me out of the film. Paranormal or possession movies with kids can be tricky. Child actors are not always the best in serious roles, and unfortunately, Marco's actor isn't either. He's both obnoxious and hilariously over the top at times, making the movie funny when it probably isn't supposed to be. I don't know if it's the English dubbed voice actor or the kid himself, but the resulting unintentional humor takes away from the scare factor, at least for me personally. Overall, Shock is the second Bava film I've seen after Kaltiki the Immortal Monster. It dragged a bit for me, but has an otherwise entertaining story. Certain aspects, such as the acting, atmosphere, and pacing, will appeal to some and turn off others. Check it out for yourself, especially if you're a fan of 70s and 80s Italian cinema. It wasn't my favorite, but it does urge me to continue my exploration of the director and others from the same wheelhouse. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought of Shock and whether you found it entertaining. Until then, we've got a physical copy from Arrow Video to unbox and watch, so let's head on over and check out the release. Here we are with our 2022 release of Mario Bava's Shock, as brought to us by Arrow Video. This release comes in a standard slipcover with newly commissioned artwork. I will say the teal and red color scheme feels a bit tiresome, and I much prefer the original poster for the film, which we'll see soon enough. The back side of the slip has all of our release information, and underneath is a matching clear case. Inside, we have a single Blu-ray disc on the right, and a first printing booklet on the left. Running 24 pages cover to cover, it contains an article by Troy Howarth, writer of several Italian cinema and giallo-focused books. He goes on to write about Mario Bava's career and Shock's place within it, as it was Bava's last major production prior to his death. A great read that gives some good background information and weight to the film, and Bava's career as a whole. With the booklet aside, we'll run back to our case really quick to see that the sleeve is, as per usual, reversible featuring the aforementioned original poster work on the opposing side, of which I prefer much more. With that, however, we've unboxed our copy of Arrow Video's release for Shock. We've got a good amount of supplements to dig through after the film, so let's head on over and check out what's included on the disc. Presented in high definition with a brand new 2K restoration from the original 35mm camera negative, Shock looks fantastic. It's presented alongside both the English and Italian soundtracks, with the matching insert shots and front and end titles to boot. The subtitles for the Italian version are newly translated, with an SDH option as well. On top of the film itself, we have a brand new audio commentary track with writer Tim Lucas, author of Mario Bava, All the Colors of the Dark. Not only does Lucas bring his knowledge of Bava's background, career, and influences to the table, but he also makes a point to watch the film alongside us, sharing tons of tidbits and analyses as we move through the story of Shock. I appreciate the consistent back and forth between what's happening on screen and off. 
as this is the only commentary track included, definitely give it a listen if you're a fan of Italian cinema, and Bava in particular. Aero packs in a ton of video supplements to watch as well. We start out with a trio of newly recorded and presented interviews. The first, with co-director and co-writer Lamberto Bava, runs over 30 minutes long and is titled A Ghost in the House. Bava talks all about some of his earlier interests and projects in the film industry and how some of his works eventually led to larger productions on his father's part, especially the initial formation and many changes that led to the feature film Shock. He turns his focus to the film itself after some time, giving a ton of behind-the-scenes information and stories. The second interview, also running just over 30 minutes long, is with co-writer Dardano Sacchetti, titled Via del Orologio 33. Sacchetti talks a bit about Bava's career and how he eventually linked up with Bava as a screenwriter after a public falling out with Dario Argento. He goes on to talk about his part in the formation of Shock's script and further discusses various elements of Shock from a writing standpoint. Our third and final interview only runs a few minutes long, featuring film historian Alberto Farina. It's titled, The Most Atrocious Torture. Farina takes the time to discuss actress Daria Nicolodi and the film Shock, as he shares a piece of artwork from the late Mario Bava that was originally gifted to Nicolodi back during the production. Having interviewed her several times before, Farina has some quick stories and insights to share. Moving away from the interviews, we now get to a 20-minute video essay to watch from author and critic Alexandra Heller Nicholas. She recently wrote an article for Vinegar Syndrome's release of Censor, and it's good to see her name appear once more. Titled, The Devil Pulls the Strings, Heller Nicholas discusses puppetry, possession, and the related imagery as seen in Mario Bava's Shock. She focuses on the hand statue that is seemingly omnipresent in the film, analyzing its symbolism and place within the overarching story, both literally and figuratively. A great watch for those wishing to delve further into the story of Shock itself. Following our video essay is the final major video supplement before we get to the usual fair of inclusions. Titled Shock, Horror, The Stylistic Diversity of Mario Bava, this featurette runs over 50 minutes long and features author and critic Stephen Thrower, as he shares an incredible appreciation of Mario Bava's career and final film. Acting almost like a mini-documentary, Thrower's video is a great inclusion for anyone interested in diving into this director and his filmography. This is something I would definitely revisit if ever I decide to really dig through Bava's work. With that, however, we can round out Aero Video's release of Shock with a collection of smaller inclusions to watch. We get, of course, an Italian theatrical trailer for the film, as well as four US TV spots for the movie, as released under the alternative title, Beyond the Door 2. Though I'm fairly certain this film has nothing to do with the original Beyond the Door. On top of the trailers, we also get a gallery with 30 images, featuring a collection of promos, lobby cards, and posters. Overall, Shock isn't exactly the film for me, but it is another nudge in the right direction toward my slow interest in Italian horror. From what I've watched and read, I'll be certain to at least check out more of Mario Bava's filmography. The amount of extras packed into Aero Video's release make for another great addition to the shelf of any collector focusing on Italian giallo and horror. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of Shock or what your stance is in general on the films of Bava. Are you a fan of his directorial work? Perhaps you enjoyed or didn't enjoy Shock, but find his earlier works to be much different. Let me know down below, and until then, thanks again for joining me here on Pajama Theater. Like, subscribe, and follow me on social media for more boutique Blu-ray goodness. Until then, take care and I'll see you guys next time.